Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at global atmospheric circulation. This is part of Paper 1, Unit A, The Challenge of Natural Hazards. In the Northern and Southern Hemisphere, there are three cells operating circulating air throughout the troposphere. This is a layer of atmosphere closest to the Earth. It is between 10 and 15 kilometres above the Earth's surface and it is where most of Earth's weather takes place. We call this global atmospheric circulation. This system is driven by the equator where air rises due to the solar radiation there. This leads to low pressure and rainfall. When it reaches the edge of the atmosphere, it moves either north or south, with the air becoming colder and denser so it sinks. This creates high pressure and dry conditions at around 30 degrees north and south. As a result, this is where you will find many of the world's deserts. Air rises again at 60 degrees and ascends at 90 degrees. The smallest and weakest cells are the polar cells. These extend from between 60 and 70 degrees north and south to the poles. The sun's rays hit the polar regions at an angle, meaning they receive less concentrated solar radiation and they don't warm up as much as other parts of the world. The cold air at the poles descends, meaning there is no condensation and rain. This cold air spreads out from the poles as surface wind becoming warmer. At around 60 degrees, this warm air rises, leading to clouds and rain. This air will then flow back to the poles. The feral cell is found in the middle and is driven by the other two cells. Air descends at the tropics as it is pulled down by the adjacent air in the Hadley cell. Air rises at about 60 degrees as it is pulled up by the adjacent polar cell. Air converges at low altitudes to ascend along the boundaries between the cool polar air and the warm subtropical air that generally occur between 60 and 70 degrees north and south of the equator. This often occurs around the latitude of the UK, which gives us our unsettled weather. The circulation within the feral cell is completed by a return flow of air at high altitudes towards the tropics. This is where it joins sinking air from the Hadley cell. The feral cell moves in the opposite direction to the other two cells and acts like a gear. In this cell, the surface wind will flow from a southerly direction in the northern hemisphere. However, the spin of the earth induces an apparent motion to the right in the northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. This deflection is caused by the Coriolis effect and leads to the prevailing westerly and southwesterly winds often experienced over the UK. The Hadley cell is a cell that you do need to know about. The sun shines intensely on the equator, heating the land. This in turn heats the air, which rises, creating a low pressure zone at lower levels. The rising air cools and condenses, forming towering cumulonimbus storm clouds. The air continues to rise to the edge of the troposphere, where it starts to move towards the poles, north or south. At around 30 degrees north and south, the air cools and sinks, creating a high pressure zone with a warm and dry climate with little cloud, typically where deserts are found. Surface winds take the air from the tropics back to the equator, completing this cell. Within the Hadley cells, the trade winds blow towards the equator. They then ascend near the equator as a broken line of thunderstorms, which form the intertropical convergence zones or the ITCZ. From the tops of these storms, the air flows towards higher latitudes where it sinks to produce high pressure regions over subtropical oceans and the world's hot deserts, such as the Sahara in Northern Africa. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on global atmospheric circulation. Thank you for watching.